Welcome back. Dr. Art Molin is here answering your medical questions on the coronavirus today. Everyone has so many questions and yes, I know one of the things you want to do is just give people the facts I, and I, not fear because it, it, we want to make sure people have the information they need, but we don't want you to panic. It, it, exactly. I want to try to take the panic out of the environment because it's gotten so far beyond. The number of people who are getting seriously ill is much less than the number of people who may contract this. So yes, a lot of people will come down and you know basically be sick from this, no question about it, but will they get seriously ill? Very few will actually get seriously ill from it. And the percentage of people who actually will uh, have mortality with this is going to be the people who are immunocompromised, those with heart disease, those with lung disease, those who have other underlying conditions, diabetes and things like that, and the elderly. They're the ones that we need to protect the most. So those are the ones that I'm most concerned about, but it's not the younger people. I mean, historically, when we've had influenza and things like that, the children disseminate this very quickly, and we often worry about the younger people getting seriously ill. But with this, it's really most of the older people, you know, and is there a particular age? Well, they may say people over the age of 65 or elderly or 75 or 80, but it just depends upon what your immune system is. So that's one of the things you need to do is try to keep your immune system strong so that you're not put into that higher risk category. So we've got a lot of questions yes. to get to. First one, spring break traveling with the kids to Mexico. Is that okay? Well, I, I mean, I think it sounds like a lot of fun, but on the other side of the coin, uh, they're really restricting travel uh, anywhere, and whether it's to Mexico or, you know, whether it's uh, somewhere uh, uh, out of the country, uh, I, you know, I just think at this point, uh, you need to cancel those types of plans. And even if you're traveling by car and not by air, I think it's a good idea just to cancel those plans. Another question, can you get it if you haven't traveled or had contact with people who have it? Well, here, here's the interesting thing about the coronavirus is some people may actually contract the coronavirus and uh, not have any symptoms. So they're asymptomatic. They may have it and they don't know. But on the other side of the coin, they could transmit it to someone else. So uh, I think that, uh, yes, you can potentially uh, contract it even though you haven't been traveling or uh, exposed to anybody that you In think contact. might have had mm -hmm. it. Uh, the third question, should I pull my mom out of a care facility? But only if it's an epicenter. You know, some of the epicenters we've had, of course, in Seattle and a lot of the elderly people uh, got seriously ill. But no, I don't think you should take your mom out of a facility unless they've actually been diagnosed with the coronavirus. The other thing is if you take her out of the facility, then you have to try to figure out how you're going to provide for her care. You know, so I think that uh, at this point, leave her in the facility yeah, unless for some reason it becomes one of the epicenters. So how many days, the next question, does it take to see the symptoms after yeah. maybe you contract yeah, so, it? So the incubation period is basically two to 14 days. That's what we know now. Now, on the other side of the coin, we don't know enough about the coronavirus at this point. So it could even be longer, but they're saying from the CDC, it's two to 14 days. Next question, do I need to call my doctor if maybe I recently traveled to Italy but have no symptoms? Uh, it, it's probably a good idea to call your doctor and to uh, just let them know that you have traveled. Are you experiencing any of the symptoms? Are you experiencing a cough, a high fever, any chest pain, difficulty breathing? So those would be the things that you'd want to call your doctor. The doctor may suggest that you get tested for coronavirus. Again, not knowing whether or not you have it, it would be a good idea maybe to get tested for even other viruses. Make sure you don't have influenza. Make sure that you don't have an elevated weight count, things like that. We've got one more question to get to this morning. How long will the coronavirus last if someone sneezes or coughs? And yeah. You know, people are sneezing and it, coughing it, all the time. Yeah, so it can last on surfaces for up to 12 hours. So say okay. someone touches a doorknob and you touch that doorknob, you know, six hours later, the, the virus could actually be lying on that particular doorknob and you could potentially contract it. 12 hours. 12 hours. Okay, Dr. Yeah. Art, thank you so much You're for being welcome. here this morning, going through uh, some questions that yeah. we had and, sent in. It's going to be a topic yeah. I know we're going to be talking yeah, and, about. And every one Sunday. last thing, please don't panic. I mean, just try to be sensible about what you're doing. I think long term, this virus is going to burn out over the next uh, six to eight weeks, and everything's going to be fine. And just have a positive attitude with this. You're not going to get sick.
Okay, thank you, Dr. Art. If you have any health questions for Dr. Art, you can always email him. I'm sure his inbox has been <laughs> uh, extra full the last couple of weeks. There's his email, askdrartmullen at gmail.com.